70 years ago, when Captain Bill Winkapaw of Rockland, Maine, who was flying supply missions up the coast of Maine, lost his way in a snowstorm. Uh, he found his way back to Rockland by the means of the lighthouses who clicked on. He was able to guide himself back to their lights and eventually found safe haven at the uh, Rockland Airport. And uh, in appreciation for, uh, he felt that these lighthouse keepers actually saved his life. He flew that year to these lighthouses delivering the first Christmas packages uh, in a fixed wing aircraft and actually throwing them out. He took upon himself a young writer to fly with him named Edward Rose Snow. And when Captain Winkapaw left the uh, country to fly uh, gold over the mountains and Andes, Ed continued this flight for 44 years. Uh, a few years ago, the Hull Life Saving Museum decided they wanted to do a testimonial to uh, Edward and at that time we found out he was ill and could no longer continue it. So the museum has picked up the uh, gauntlet, so to speak, and we are still carrying on the tradition today. Okay. Now, second question is, why do you do it? Why do you take on the flying standard? Why do you take it upon yourself to deliver these packages? Mainly because it's such a wonderful tradition, uh, and you really get a lot of self-satisfaction out of it, and it makes you feel good. And, okay, I asked you about the museum's role in the program. How do the other museum people feel? How much, how much volunteer activity do you get in putting this together? Well, we have the full cooperation of all the staffing of the museum. We're all volunteers down there. We don't have anybody on a paid staff. And uh, they really look forward to doing this every year now. And how do, the, how do you think the lighthouse keepers feel when they see your helicopter flying in and, and delivering their Christmas packages? Well, the, the, the keepers and the uh, adult personnel love it, but the kids really, really are happy to see it. There is a very lonely, isolated life some of them still lead today. What I'd like to know is, could you tell us where, where, where are we going to be flying today? We are going to be flying today down the Lower Cape, out to Three Islands, into Rhode Island, and into Connecticut. We're going to visit Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, Block Island, Woods Hole, uh, Toro, Warwick, and Saybrook, Connecticut. And now these lighthouses, they're all occupied by, by lighthouse keepers and their families who basically are alone at Christmas. That's true. The uh, tradition really has been that we, Santa always visits these people because they really are guardians of the, of the lighthouses. It's a very lonely, desolate job. And they have to make their own Christmas. And we feel that Santa really helps make the Christmas for the children. There we go. Um, can you think of anything else you want to ask? Okay. Let's get into the history of, of why the flying Santa. I thought we yeah. covered that this morning. We right? did cover that. Yeah. Just recover now. Okay. The, uh, the history of the Flying Santa, well, the history goes back to 70 years ago when a pilot named uh, Bill Winkapar got lost off of Rockland, Maine, and uh, used the lighthouses to find his way back to safety. And in appreciation, that Christmas, he was the first one to drop packages to these uh, lonely station keepers. A few years later, the uh, author of Edward Rose Snow came upon the scene. He flew with Captain Bill there, and he took over when Bill went to South America to fly gold over the Andes, and he ran it for 44 years until five years ago. He was too ill to continue, and at that time, the Hull Life Saving Museum has taken over the chores and have dedicated ourselves to keep it going as long as necessary. Why do you do this? Why do we do this? Why do you do this? Why do I do this myself personally? I do it because it gives me a good feeling uh, to be part of a tradition. It gives me a good feeling when I see the youngsters and see the families that are on the receiving end of this. And it also gives me a good, feel, good feeling being able to work to pull it together and, you know, pull it off. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody.
outfit, you're so pretty. <laughs> Listen, I gotta run because we have to we have to go visit somebody else now. Oh, wow. But I'm so glad you came so we could see you. Merry Christmas to you. Goodbye, Sid. I would love to have this at all. Yeah, good boy. Yeah, good boy. Oh, thank you.
I've been waiting for a year. This lady calls me Santa Claus every single day of my life. Who's here? Who's here? Santa Claus. Yeah, you know it, right? <laughs> Doris, Merry Christmas. You, make a you might as well just have something. No, you have one too. Oh, thank you. Out of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make it over She's the list? She's been good. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good. Check them out. You're nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. like to know is could you tell us where we're, where we're going to be flying today we are going to be flying today down the lower cape out to three islands into rhode island and into connecticut we're going to visit nantucket martha's vineyard block island woods hole uh toro warwick and sabre connecticut and now these lighthouses they're all occupied by by lighthouse keepers and their families who 
basically are alone at Christmas. That's true. The uh, tradition really has been that we Santa always visits these people because they really are guardians of the of the lighthouses. It's a very lonely, desolate job. Uh, they have to make their own Christmas, and I, we feel that Santa really helps make the Christmas, Christmas for the children. There we go. Um, Dean, can you think of anything else you want to ask? Okay. Yeah, let's get into the history of, of why the Flying Santa. I thought and we covered that this morning. We right? did cover that. Yeah. Let's just recover now. Okay. The, uh, the history of the Flying Santa, well, the history goes back to 70 years ago when a pilot named uh, Bill Winkapar got lost off of Rockland, Maine, and... Uh, used the lighthouses to find his way back to safety. And in appreciation, that Christmas, he was the first one to drop packages to these uh, lonely station keepers. A few years later, the uh, author of Edward Rose Snow came upon the scene. He flew with Captain Bill there. And he took over when Bill went to South America to fly gold over the Andes. And he ran it for 44 years. Until five years ago, he was too ill to continue, and at that time, the Hull Life Saving Museum has taken over the chores and have dedicated ourselves to keep it going as long as necessary. Why do you do this? Why do we do this? Why do you do this? Why do I do this myself personally? I do it because it gives me a good feeling uh, to be part of a tradition. It gives me a good feeling when I see the youngsters and see the families that are on the receiving end of this. And it also gives me a good, feel, good feeling being able to work to pull it together and, you know, pull it off. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Dear Santa, of course. And we'll take you with him as he makes the delivery. Stay with us. I got hooked up. overhead today. Of course, it is not Christmas Eve, I know that, and Santa's reindeer and sleigh are still at the North Pole preparing for the big night, but with the help of Chopper 7 and the whole life-saving museum, Santa flies every year to area lighthouses, dropping off gifts to the faithful keepers. Today, we followed Santa to Boston Light in Hull. Helicopters will do when there's not enough snow for Santa and his sleigh. This is the 65th year of the traditional lighthouse visit, started by the late Edward Rowe Snow. We should explain the reindeer are grazing now, getting ready, yeah. fattening up for the Plenty big trip. Plenty of grass out there for them. Mm -hmm. Nothing the covering it. Well, sometimes we put a red, a red, uh, just paint a red nose on the helicopter. Though. All right, R.D. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> that is the news for now. I'm Dolores Andy, and for Kate Sullivan, thank you for joining us. And I'm R.D. Saul. We'll see you on the Night Beat at 11. Up next, the CBS Evening News with Dan Brown.